Do you really need an external VSWR meter? Perhaps you don't. But perhaps you do. You know, it is true that you can get away without a VSWR meter because most modern transceivers, whether they be HF or VHF, will have a VSWR meter built in. Not so much the VHF uh, FM boxes, but certainly the multi-mode radios for VHF will have a VSWR meter built in. And in fact, most of the HF transceivers will have a built-in antenna tuner. So if you've got a built-in meter, why the heck would you want an external one? And it's a valid question. And I have actually covered this in brief details in past, but I thought I'd actually try and embody all the questions that I keep getting asked about SWR meters into one video. So dealing first of all with why do you need one if you've already got one? You know, I, yeah, it's a valid question. Well, the answer is, I think that for many of us, it's psychologically satisfactory to see an external largish meter showing that the power is going up the coax and there's not too much coming back in the way of VSWR because I think it's generally understood that if you've got power coming back it's wasted and it's also satisfactory to know that everything's working okay that the power is coming out of your transceiver and immediately anything happens the power drops off or you've got a vswr power's coming back down the line it's immediately obvious it's not so obvious if it's a small meter and sometimes on your transceiver you actually got to select that meter uh, as a menu item so there is this thing about having a nice large meter and you can monitor what's going on most important thing what's going on is is power coming out is it going up the coax is it being wasted coming back down the coax so that's really the number one reason for having an external vswr meter but there are other reasons in this diagram on the left hand side you've got a box which represents your transceiver and inside that transceiver is a vswr meter and then that feeds into an antenna tuner and the output of that goes into another VSWR meter, your external VSWR meter, and then that goes on to the antenna system. If that internal antenna tuner is switched off, then the VSWR meter inside your transceiver and your external VSWR meter should, in theory, indicate exactly the same values and there's no obvious advantage other than the one I've just highlighted where it's really nice to see a big external meter that you can see all the time and you haven't got to select it in your transceiver menu system. Now although most VHF UHF transceivers won't have built-in antenna tuners most of the HF ones do, and it's highly likely that you will want that antenna tuner to be switched on because it gets rid of any VSWR that the transceiver sees, and that makes sure that maximum power is going to the antenna system because as soon as the VSWR rises beyond a certain point, say around about 2 to 1, your transceiver will start to reduce power to protect itself. So it's in the transceiver's interest and your interest to have that ATU switched in in order to get maximum power transfer. And when your antenna tuner is switched in and adjusted correctly, you will find that on the meter inside your transceiver, you've got almost zero VSWR, which is very satisfactory. But, and it's a rather big but, it doesn't get rid of the VSWR on the coax line to the antenna system. And if you have an external VSWR meter, that meter will tell you the truth. The internal meter is seeing a good match because the antenna tuner is taking care of that. But in real life, you've still got a VSWR on that coax cable. And that's one of the prime reasons for having an external meter. It tells you the truth 
even though the transceiver is, is sort of fooled into thinking there's a perfect VSWR. And when your transceiver is fooled into thinking there's a perfect VSWR, it's quite happy to deliver full power, which it otherwise might not do. Yes, caution indeed. Let me explain. RF travels up the coax cable to the antenna. It travels along both the inner conductor and the sheathing, but RF only travels along the surface of the conductor. So on the sheathing, we've got RF traveling up the inside of the sheathing, but we've also got some RF wandering about down the outside of the sheathing. Now that RF wandering up and down the outside of the sheathing is going to cause a problem. VSWR meters are very sensitive to that and it depends on the frequency, the length of coax cable as to how serious the interference or the error is in the VSWR reading. Basically, if you get a voltage node near the VSWR meter, it's going to upset it and it's going to give some strange results, results that can't be relied upon. And the way to overcome this is to install a line isolator. Let me show you the line isolator that I use. It's nothing very special. I use a 240-43 ferrite core. The actual material is not overly important provided that it is suitable for this application and the diameter is not so important and even the number of turns are not so important and you can actually get away without a ferrite core simply by winding say 10 or 12 turns of coax cable around a form which is around about say I don't know, four centimeters diameter it's not important all you're trying to do is to quench the RF on that outer sheathing. But please remember to use one because without it, you can get some errors. And it not only affects the VSWR, me VSWR meter on the outside of the radio, in other words, an external one, it will also affect the readings you get on an internal one. So be cautious. One of the most popular ranges of VSWR meters is the Avea range, and here we see one that is designed for 2 meters and 70 cms, but they also do a similar one that is di designed for HF right up to 2 meters. If we start on the left hand side, we've got a large analog meter and a means of zero adjusting that meter with a little screw hole beneath it. Then to the right, we've got a blue button, and that enables us to either read average power level where the meter roughly follows the power output of the transceiver or switch to PEP where you get a steady reading which is approximately the PEP output of your transceiver. We've got a switch for selecting three power levels for full scale deflection 5 watts, 20 watts and 200 watts and that highlights one of the advantages of an external meter you can actually read full scale fairly low power if you're a QRP enthusiast it also means you can do some power and VSWR measurements running very low power you only need about four or five watts to give full scale deflection when measuring VSWR for example and this takes us on to the next switch the top position enables us to read power output in watts to read absolute VSWR, we put the switch down to the cal or calibrated position, rotate to the top right hand knob until we get full scale deflection, and then push the button down to VSWR, and that will give us the absolute VSWR on the coax line. And the far right hand switch is quite interesting because when we're measuring power, we can either measure the power going up the antenna, or we can measure the reflected power coming back down, which is something that you can't normally see on an internal VSWR power meter. And finally, there's an off position if you don't want the power meter to be active for any reason. On the rear, we've got two SO239 sockets, one to the antenna and the other to the transceiver. There's also a handy press switch on the rear, which enables you to change the full scale power reading from 200 watts to 400 watts. Finally, there's a power socket on the rear, which is designed for 12 volts, and they provide the lead for that, but that is simply for illumination of the meter. It doesn't actually have any functionality other than illuminating the front panel meter.
So that was the Avair AV400 VSWR power meter for 2 meters and 70 cms. There's also a similar one that covers the HF bands from 160 meters to 2 meters, and that's a very popular one, popular one. Exactly the same layout, just a different frequency range. And I'll put a link below this video to these two VSWR meters. So, do you need an external VSWR meter, or don't you? Well, really, the answer is, it's your choice. You can now see what an external VSWR power meter can do for you. It's up to you to decide. But I think many of us find that it's very comforting to be able to see power coming out of the transceiver and going up to the antenna, to see if there's any problems if the VSWR suddenly rises, and to do some interesting measurements. There we are. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been interesting. Thank you for your support on this channel. Very much appreciated. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. It gives us some indication of how many people are actually watching this channel. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.